guys, now we're starting with part two of the studio session for mix number one. If you haven't seen part one, you can click the link in the description to bring you back to the first video so you can watch that first and then come to this video to watch it second. I'm going to start to compress some things. I'm going to start with the drums and I'm just going to start with the drums. claps. Start over here on the clap. It's already fairly punchy. So I'm going to just add a little bit of compression. Try and bring up those other transients a little bit. Um, and even before that, maybe I'll add, no, I'll add saturation after. So I'll just compress a little bit of this, this clap. And I'm just going to I wonder if I can even miss that initial transient. So I want to see how it looks after I really slow attack there. I want the punchiness of the clap to remain, but I don't really want the the really harsh transients. This is my first compressor here. So I'm gonna turn down a little bit of the attack and try to grab the initial transients as well, and just to compress a little bit lighter. Before and after. How difference in how difference is the volume? Negative, negative twelve and without. So it is a bit louder. Just gonna turn it down a little bit in the gain. There we go, just a little bit of compression. We're gonna add some compression to the, dr the drum bus later and some saturation as well. Let's go to the hi-hat. And I'm also gonna actually do some EQing. I forgot to do that first. So you won't wanna be compressing until after you EQ your EQ um, for the most part. So I'm gonna go into the clap and just EQ, make sure it's sitting how I want it to sit. It's got a little bit of low body that I don't think I want. but it is a really nice punchy kick, so I'm not gonna take out too much of it. Pretty, pretty good there, actually. I'm pretty happy with that. Next, we'll do the hi-hat here, the first one. So I've already boosted a little bit of the the range here to try and make it punchier, taking up the low end. It's good practice. And let's adjust our compressor here. So the compressor is compressing pretty hard. I think it's because I wanted those quieter transients to punch through as well, but that is not gonna sound as good as if we compress in two different phases. So just going to compress lightly the top, just try to get a little bit of that initial transient just to be Maybe a little bit flatter, a little bit more body to it. A little less punchy. A little bit more punchy, sorry. Okay, and now that sounds pretty good. EQ is good. Maybe a little bit, there we go. Now this hi-hat is very, very full bodied and it has a lot of kind of mid section to it, not a lot of high. And the reason I did that is because I kind of wanted to just fill up the spectrum because I had this really high, um, high frequency hi-hat here and it's pretty punchy. So I'm just going to have uh, the lower body one kind of fill up some of the spectrum and fill up some of that empty mid space in our percussion and it kind of, helps fulfill the track and carry it along. So the high end looks decent off this one. Low end looks decent. Maybe I'll boost 
slightly in some fundamental frequencies here. Just boost that punchiness a little bit. Okay. And the compressor. So this doesn't seem like it needs too much compression. It's Let's see how it sounds with a little bit of compression. I don't want to compress it too much because I do like the swing of it, and by compressing the the one hi-hat there, it's kind of just going to make it all less dynamic. So I'm going to just, just compress the top end just a little bit, just so it's consistent a little bit. Okay, now we have this miscellaneous hat here. I've already EQ'd this one. I just wanted a little bit of swing to the track, very subtle. Don't even need to compress it, really. Now these... Let's see if we can compress these. I don't think we'll need to really. No, I don't think I need to compress these. Um, they're pretty strong sounding as they are. They don't really need compression, and I do want a little bit of swing to them, as as much as you know, programmed as they are. And then we have our tambourines. This one could be compressed a little bit. It is a little bit swingy. Do a slow attack. Just very light compression. I don't want to be compressing all these too much because they are programmed. They're not uh, they're not swinging all that much. They're not being overly dynamic. So just a little tight bit of compression at the top just to reduce one or two decibels of gain and then turn it back up. And that's just going to be to control a little bit more of what is going on with the with the drums. It's, it's just to make them sound a little bit uh, fuller, a little bit tighter without taking away the initial punch. This one definitely I can compress. I can hear how it's very wide sounding. Uh, dynamic sounding, sorry. And I want a really fast attack on this one. And again, just this is only 1.5 decibels of gain reduction. It's kind of hard to hear, so I'll turn it up. Kind of make it sound a little bit fuller, a little bit more consistent. This one I'm going to compress because I want it to be a little bit less in the top end punchiness and just really full sounding. So I'm going to remove a lot of gain here. So it, it takes off that like little tip of the punch and it's going to make a, a little bit of the lower end a little bit more prominent. add a little bit of saturation as well just to kind of help it punch through see how it looks like with the saturation on it just going to boost that harmonic frequency there Okay, so we listen before and after. Maybe clean it a little bit. There we go. Okay. I believe we'll need to compress this one as well. Really fast attack. It is pretty punchy already, so we just pretty quick attack. We don't need to be too much punchier. And again, just a few decibels. I'm not crazy about compre overly compressing. I don't, I'll leave that to the mastering stage where they can compress a little bit harder. There we go. This vocal will need to EQ, take out the low end. Uh, this resonant frequency here can cause a bit of muddiness. So I'm going to drop it just a slight amount, just a little bit. And then I'm going to boost the frequency right after that by a little bit, and that's just going to kind of compensate for what we took out here. Another EQ, just to remove the extra low end, and again, boost up here, get some clarity in there, and 
and the reverb. It's good. Maybe turn up the whiteness a little bit. I can hear it's already panning, so I must have done that in the writing process, panning back and forth, which is good. Um, this sound definitely is going to need some compression. I want to make it more punchy. Yeah, that's nice. That's a nice sound. So you can already see that the it's pretty uh, it's it's pretty dynamic. Um, for, well, it's a little bit dynamic, and we can have a pretty slow attack because this initial transient here is pretty quiet compared to this one here. So we can add a pretty decent attack time and let that punch come through pretty hard before we start to compress. Oh, that's a little bit too much. And also by compressing, we're gonna keep these volumes a little bit more consistent. And we'll have a pretty, um, we can have a medium sized attack for this. Okay, let's hear the before and after. Especially that one point is sort of super punchy. Oh, before and after. So with the compressor, we're giving it a little bit more body. Let's hear it with the compressor in again. You can see they're a bit bulkier. I can probably do a little bit more compression on this. I'm going to a faster attack this time and just reduce the slight a bit. A really fast attack. And there we go. So before and after. Perfect. Now for the bass synth, we already have a limiter on it for the side chaining. So this is for the kick. To make sure that we are getting a bit of side chain on on the bass, which oh this this isn't for the kick oh no that's not for the kick. Um, we do have a side chain in the bass bus though, so we can just rely on that. This is for the bass plug here. Okay, and that's just side chain compression a little bit to make room for this pluck that's coming in, that punchier pluck that you heard before. But I don't want it to be too much because it's not holding a lot of bass heavy weight, just that one initial pluck, so I'm going to turn it down. Yeah, I just want that, that really bass heavy one to come through for the most part. Okay. Just gonna save my project real quick. Okay, the lead we won't have to worry about right now because we're gonna come back to that after, like I said. This sound, <clears throat> add some EQ. Actually, let's EQ the bass first. I know I already did it in the process, but um, of writing. So you can see I have my, my bass synth there. It is a little bit lacking because I don't have the sub already written on it. So I'm just gonna boost it here for now. And when I go back into the finish the track, I'm going to add my own sub bass to it. And then this is just to reduce a little bit of the muddiness. I'm going to bring that up just a smidgen more. Then I have a bit of saturation on it. This is a uh, compressor. Oops. Oh, that was for the wrong one. There we go. So with and without the bass, let's hear it. Without the compression. A little bit punchier. Okay, and 
Next is our, our banish. <coughs> so I can see there's a little bit of base frequencies that we don't need. Take those out for sure. Most of the resonant frequencies around here. So I can boost that just slightly. I don't think there's any really competing frequencies around that area in the track. Nothing too prominent anyways. Maybe in the lead, so what we can do... Yeah, so definitely in the lead. So what we'll do is we'll open up the EQ and... Actually, I guess we can EQ the lead first, so let's go in. It's, it's a pretty hefty sound. It's got a lot of information going on. Um, maybe we can reduce some of the muddiness, but it might take away and might make it sound a little bit hollow, so we have to be careful. This one's going to be tricky to EQ. Okay, so around 16.33, I'm trying to make a little bit of room for this synth to come through. And I want to take out, it was a little bit shrill at that, at that, uh, that area there, like a little bit too resonant. So I just removed a little bit, I'm going to boost it. Just made a little bit of room. And again, I'm going to change the lead anyway, so I'm not going to focus too much on it. And let's keep on going. What else do we have here? We have the chords, which I don't know if I'm going to keep in or not, so we can leave it for now. Um, and this fire synth we have to do. Pretty simple harmonic frequency. It's just got a couple sine waves, obviously, going through. Uh, probably a saw, uh, sorry, a sawtooth wave, or maybe a sine saw or something, maybe a square wave. Um, The synth, the synth is pretty simple. You can see it's just a few frequencies here. Um, it's probably just maybe a sine wave with a bit of distortion or um, maybe a square wave that's not too... Um, the filter's not too open on it, I guess. Anyway, so we kind of just have to worry about conflicting frequencies. So I know that the R banish is around right here. So I'm just going to remove a little bit of that. And the synth sounds like it's not really affected too much by that. There's a bit of weight, so let's turn it up. Okay, everything else sounds okay. We don't need to compress that since it's a pretty... It's probably a pretty standard... Yeah, that's fine. Because it's such a... A strong... Straight-on kind of signal, like there's not really much dynamics to it. We don't really need to compress it too much, if anything. And then, what else do we have here? I think that's pretty much it. Um, this sound is already EQ'd a little bit from the stem that they sent me. Turn up a little bit. Okay, and now we can listen one more time and see how we're sounding. This is a little bit too loud. Now, a couple of the last things I want to do is, um, because I've been mixing so long, I would probably be best if I took a break, but before I do that and do kind of like the final sweep of the mix before I leave it for a few days, I'm going to make my kick a bit punchier, 
and I'm going to add some saturation and compression to the whole drum bus. After that, when I come back to the mix, um, either later today or at a different day, because we want to always be coming to the mix to finalize it with fresh ears, um, I would probably go in and do some more really selective EQ. Um, I can do some panning and just kind of finalize all the levels. Oh, excuse me, I have hiccups at the worst time. Um, okay, so let's go to the kick and let's compress that a little bit. I just want to see how it looks in the compressor here and see if we can make it just a bit punchier with some transient design here. It's a nice sounding kick. Transient looks pretty good. I could probably make it a slight bit punchier. Um, I can. I have a multi-band compression here, compressor here. So I have this is called Sorcery, and it's it's multi-band compressor compressor. And I'm just going to increase a bit of the second and third frequency band here. So the bass and the low end. My sub sounds pretty good. My high and everything could be turned up a little bit maybe. Um, but just basing it off the transient, I can. And like seeing the transient, I'm going to try and boost this area a little bit. And I can do that with compression as well, but I'm just going to try it in sorcery first. So what I can do is open up the compressor with the detached on so it's not going to go away when I click out. And then I can start to see how it looks and start to boost certain areas of the, the compressor and see what it does to the transient. So right away you can see that that kind of punch pushes the punchiness up a little bit here. So that would be nice. So before. I can kind of hear what it's doing there. So. I'm just going to boost up just a tiny, tiny bit. I mean, another decibel or two. And then I'm going to do the same with the low mids here because that's where some of the punchiness is also going to sit. You can solo it to hear what it sounds like. Just a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit punchier. Just a little bit because if we go too far with the, with the transients being different, it's going to be, um, you know, our kick is going to start really, really punchy and then just drown out with the sub. And we want a powerful sub as well. Another thing that we can do is obviously turn it up, but I like the the volume of of where the kick's sitting right now. So I'm just going to, um, or for the sub, so I'm going to reduce the sub volume by just a slight amount, and then I'm going to turn the whole thing up, just very, very slightly. And let's hear it in the context of the mix. Still could be a bit punchier. I think what I'm going to do is add another small, small layer onto the kick so that it snaps through a little bit more. It's it's a, it's kind of getting buried behind all of the muddyish sounds of the mix, like the low mid sounds of the mix. So I'm just going to go into a sample pack here. Let me turn this down a little bit. Sorry if that was loud. Maybe try this one. I'm just going to add in another layer to the kick. That sounds pretty good. And I'm going to drop it on here. And then I'm going to have to, because it's already exported, this is the issue with freezing tracks, uh, is that now when you want to make a change you have to re-export so I'm going to try this method it might not be perfect it looks like the transients and the waveforms are all lined up so I'm just going to um, change this to kick layer 2 oh, whatever I know what it means and then I'm going to add oh my goodness 
that was a mistake because that is the only pattern in this whole project that has anything on it. Okay, now we have my kick here. Oh, that has something too. Let's make a new pattern, kick, new. Okay, and now this has nothing. We can just add the four there. Make sure I take off those kicks I added on. There we go. Okay, sorry if that was a bit confusing. Let's add in our kick. So now we have this new pattern with our kick drums. This new nice punchy sound added on top of a layer of our kick. And it's just to add a bit of um, saturation to the kick drum that we have here. Let's hear how it sounds with everything. So let's hear with, with and without. I'm going to turn everything else off. So it just adds a little bit extra grit to the kick, a little bit of um, body to help punch it through. I'm going to turn down the volume just a slight bit because I want it to be a little bit less noticeable. Let's hear without bass and hear how the difference, hear the difference is. So you can really tell that. It's got that really nice body to it. Uh, one last thing that I totally forgot that I do, or that I did, and I, I've done this before as well, is I forgot that I had this volume turned down, the bass sub frequencies turned down. And the reason that I turned them down is that it's not so stressful on my ears. And I'm going to have to make sure that the bass and the sub and everything sound good with this turned off. And I've been mixing with it off, which is totally fine for me because I know that I'm I'm used to that and I have um, a sub pack on my, my back so I actually hear the bass through my body pretty prominently. Uh, if you don't know what a sub pack is you can just google it. It's essentially just like a subwoofer you wear on your back instead of actually having a subwoofer in your studio space and it just makes it so that I can travel with it and I don't bother anybody else with a subwoofer frequency going through the hotel rooms and um, so what I do is I compensate for the lack of bass in the headphones that are coming through and I put it on my sub pack and I, I turn up my sub packs that I still hear the bass, but it's less in my ears and a little bit more in the body. So you feel it a bit more. And then what I do is I mix the track and then I turn it off and make sure that everything sounds good. So before I was saying that the uh, the one frequency was, or the one sound was missing a little bit of bass frequencies, that is still true because I know that I haven't added a bass and I can see it in the EQ. But now we can just double check that our, our kick drum isn't too subby because I want to hear it as well as um, as feel it. So let's go ahead and listen. So this is before. And this is at this point, I turn my sub back off. So I'm just totally only hearing and not feeling the, the bass. And then I compare with it as on as well. So with it off. On. Very, very slight difference probably won't be able to hear it unless you have a really decent monitors or a subwoofer but let's turn my sub pack back on and I'll feel the difference now very very slight I can barely even feel a difference which is good that means that we're mixing appropriately and it's sounding really nice let's listen to the the whole track one more time with this new kick and then that will wrap things up I have to make sure that my kick is all the way through the track and that I'm not adding it to any parts that don't actually have the kick. So I can see here in my, my stem here that I don't have. Oh, and that's not supposed to be. That's good that I noticed that. I can take that over here. Must be an automation clip issue. Okay. And there we go. We can compare one more time to our track down here.
sounds like the drums are a little bit louder in the reference track and we still have to add the saturation and the, the compression. So let's do that and then we'll wrap things up. So I'm using Maximus. I'm gonna be using the New York compression uh, preset that they have. And then I just introduce a little, little bit of parallel compression uh, or it's called New York compression. And it, what it does is it takes the original sound, it compresses the crap out of it. And that gives you all these artifacts and all these really distorted sounds. And then you introduce that tastefully back into your mix. And this is really prominent in a lot of really heavy, aggressive genres, such as maybe techno or uh, really, really prominent in dubstep and drum and bass, because it gives you that really, really aggressive sound. And when we do this in genres that aren't that aggressive, we just dial in a very, very slight amount to kind of fill up a little bit of the, uh, the spectrum with a bit of tasteful distortion. So I'll turn everything else off. And I'll, I'll, I'll exaggerate it so that you can hear how it sounds. We don't want it too much like that, but just maybe between 3 and 5%. Maybe even a little bit higher since it's a pretty aggressive track. And before and after. Pretty substantial difference. Last but not least, we will add a glue compressor to try and glue everything in the drum bus back together. Okay. Here, how are our drums? only sound. So I want a relatively, a really fast attack. I'll, I, I like to try both attack. Oh, sorry. I like to try both my 10, usually my 10 milliseconds and my 30 milliseconds. I start at 30 and then I'll reduce the threshold. I'll turn the makeup gain all the way off at first. And then release either at one second or 0.1 second. Or is it one second? Yeah, 0.1 second or auto. So you can already see there's quite a bit of game reduction going on, um, but the, the release time is, is not fast enough, so I'm going to put this down to one or two. And reduce a little bit. Yeah, when I bring it down to 10, it's, it's compressing way too, way too much. And then turn our makeup game back up. I think that the the compression, the New York compression is a little bit too shrill. I'm getting a little bit of sharpness in my ears, so I'm going to reduce that down to 5%. Still a little shrill, I'm going to reduce it a little bit more. There we go. clap, I can bring a little bit of the high end down. And then I want to add a little bit of maybe some tube distortion to my kick, make it a little bit warmer. Just very slight. Usually I will have another compressor on my bass bus here, but because most of my um, the bass synth I don't have my sub yet, I'm gonna do that after. But we'll throw a compressor on just to make sure that it looks it looks appropriate. Uh, I'm gonna turn our bass synths on here. Probably gonna be a little bit dynamic here. So then we can a little bit of compression on our bass bus here as well, just to glue the tracks a bit. Okay, and make sure our side chain compression is acting appropriately as well. 
we're doing about six decibels of gain so I'm going to just turn on the kick and the bass in here and make sure it's not pumping. That's pretty good. Last check, we'll check that our fruity comp um, that our sidechain compression on our synths is working appropriately. And it looks like it is. And we can hear how it sounds. It does sound to me like it's pumping a slight amount, so I'm going to reduce it by a little bit and increase the case speed. There we go. All right, okay. Everything else should be good. Check our side chain. I also add side chain, comp side chain compression on the sends because they are using reverb and delay. So I need to turn this down a little bit. And this one should probably be the same. And now we're making sure that we're, our kick is punching through the, the reverbs as well. Check one more time in mono to make sure we're not losing any information. Sounding really good to me, actually. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a break. I'm gonna let my ears rest a little bit. I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna do the last part of the mix, which is gonna be some panning and some final touches to make sure that the mix is pretty good. And then I usually give it um, maybe a week or two of not listening at all. And then I come back and I do another rundown just to make sure that everything sounds good. I compare it with professional tracks. I compare um, my my loudness meter, I compare uh, my uh, my spectrum analyzers, etc. I make sure that it's as ready as it can be to be mastered. And then I probably give it another few days after that, give my ears another break, and then I come back one final time to make sure that it is exactly how I want it. It's as good as it can be before I send it out to the labels to be mastered and to be submitted to the stores. Because once it's done, I can't fix any issues that I've I've come across later on. And you don't want to rush this process at all. You want to make sure that you're giving your time enough, giving yourself enough time to come back to it days and days later with completely fresh ears, as fresh as possible, so that you can be as unbiased to the sound as possible and get the highest quality mix that you can. If you enjoyed this studio session and you want to see more videos like this, I'll be doing more mix down sessions, as well as just writing sessions where you can see how I actually create music. You can check with my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dowden or subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos like this.